My last video was all about oud, the raw material used in perfumery, and we covered what oud is, the different types, and went and smelled some real oud as well as some oud bases. Now in this video we're going to go and take what we learned in the last video and actually go and make our own oud perfume. So if you're interested in making your own oud perfume or you're just simply interested in the process of making a perfume, then definitely stick around for this video. This video is sponsored by Luxeterra, my online store where you can find all of the essential equipment for perfumery. Only good quality and good value for money products make the cut and I use almost all of the products myself when making perfumes for my brand. To browse the full range of products, visit www.lux-terra.co.uk or click the link in the description. What I did over the past couple of weeks was develop this basic oud perfume concept, and I did that by doing different trial formulas. So what I'm going to do is take you through the different formulas I tried and the thought process behind them. So let's dive right into it then, and we'll start with the first formula. What I did here was really just decide to throw a load of stuff together and, and try to come up with a general concept and just really see what it smelled like, just to give me a starting point. So what I decided to do was, because I wanted this perfume really to have oud as the main note and the main theme, not with too much other stuff, I really just wanted to pick things which would complement the oud, I decided to first think of what raw materials would naturally kind of extend or complement oud well. Now because oud is kind of quite a woody um, raw material, I thought that naturally a woody perfume would be quite good. So what I decided to do was put in both the Black Agar Jivco and the Oud Samrat bases. Now I covered what these smell like in the last video, so if you haven't already watched that, then check out the link in the description. And the Oud Samrat was something that had a bit of a cashmeran, so a bit of a woolly kind of smell, and a bit of a woody amber style smell in addition to the core oud smell. So I kept that in mind when designing the formula. The black agar jivko on the other hand was my favorite oud base so I decided to include that just because I thought it would add a good oud character. So I had those two oud bases and because of the woody amber character from the oud samrat I thought I would add some timber silk pretty much aka isoe super um, which is widely used in a lot of perfumes. It's a pretty safe thing to add so I thought I would go and add some of that straight away because that'd be an easy thing to start padding out the perfume. Then I wanted a canonical kind of really bog standard generic woody note which I could use to make up quite a bit of the volume to start giving kind of the base or the, one of the base themes of the perfume. So I decided to add quite a bit of Vertofix to do that. Next then I wanted to find some things which would complement the oud, almost think of it as notes which would blend quite well into it, notes that were quite similar and hopefully kind of just make the smell uh, more complex and add some dimensionality to it. So from what I smelled, but also a lot of what I was reading, I remember especially reading that Oud had similar smells to Vetiver, Sandalwood, and Styrax, and I also found it smelled quite similar to Cypriol. So I decided to add all of those oils in, just with the idea of maybe extending the Oud smell and hopefully kind of making it a bit more rich, a bit more complex, adding different nuances to it. Then finally, I added some vanillin, and this was just because I thought with a kind of woody incense perfume, it would be good to to kind of sweeten it up a little bit. I find a lot of these uh, incense perfumes often have some kind of vanilla or sweet ambery notes in the base. And then finally I decided to add something called Zingaron. This was really for no particular reason, but simply that I got this raw material recently and I really really liked it and it had quite a woody smell. So because we're going for quite a woody kind of oud perfume, I thought uh, maybe I'll chuck this in and maybe it will work. So smelling this concept, First of all, it's not absolutely terrible, it's not too bad. I do feel like with this rough region of raw materials, we are in the right space. However, there are a few problems with it. One of them is it does seem to have some kind of off notes, some animalic or Play-Doh-like off notes. And because I put so many things in that formula, it's hard to know exactly what is causing those. And then secondly, all of these individual elements which we added, things like the sandalwood, the vetiver, the styrax, they don't really pop out. You don't necessarily notice their individual smells. They've all kind of blended together in a soup. So what that's really telling us is the formula that I've got kind of made here is while something like this may work, at this stage I have no idea what's going on with it and there's too many things that are kind of creating a big mess and I don't actually understand the mechanics of um, how these smells are in interacting together and how it's all working. So what that means is I need to go and simplify it and start kind of building up 
and do things with a little bit more understanding. So then, with that in mind, I went on to the next formula, which was the second trial. And actually, this wasn't even meant to be a full perfume trial, but I thought, let's strip it back to the basic elements, which I think would work good with the oud. And these would be the elements that would form a really good, let's say, perfume base, I like to call it. But let's say the kind of generic elements without too much character that are pretty kind of all round appealing, have pretty good performance. And let's see how just those kind of core things might work with the oud and see where that gets us. So what I decided to do was strip the formula down. And for simplicity's sake, I decided to keep just one of the ouds. And in this case, I really wanted to test the uh, oud samrat and those elements that I thought were blending well into it. So I kept the oud samrat. And because I thought it smelled like cashmeran, and I thought cashmeran actually would fit really well in this kind of fragrance, I added some cashmeran velvet to that as well. And then I added the timber silk to hopefully uh, play off the woody amber elements and help with those. And then I kept the vertofix, that generic woody thing, because I thought this would be the basis for all of the rest of our woody notes to build on top of in the perfume. Then finally, I also kept in a small amount of vanillin just to sweeten things up, because I felt again that this would be quite core to this kind of um, incense-like perfume, and hopefully it gives you that sweet base note, and it would be good to know what that uh, kind of smells like from the beginning. Now, upon smelling this, this trial was much more successful than the previous one. And that's because it's a lot clearer what's going on here. And actually with this base and this blend of notes, you've already got a pretty nice smell going on. You can really tell that the cashmeran works well with the oud here, which was actually an addition from last time. And as it dries down, you can tell that the vanillin's working at a pretty reasonable level in the base note as well, which is good. And you can smell the other elements like the Ice Wee Super and the Vertifix. You can kind of smell that they're working nicely together. Now, what you don't smell is as many muddy notes, as many um, kind of that complexity, that kind of that stuff where it was too much going on before that was confusing everything. It's a lot more of a cleaner smell. However, the only downside is that now it does smell a little bit hollow. It al al almost smells as though it's quite thin, if that makes sense. It smells like it's not, um, it's not got, say, a richness and it's not a strong kind of um, perfume, say. Let's say it's a, bit, it's a bit on the light side. It's not so distinctive in its notes. And that's something we will go and fix in the next formula. But as well as that, it's worth to think about the balance at this stage because now you can smell these fewer notes more clearly. It's much easier to kind of unpick if they're balanced correctly. And what I decided was, I felt as though the cashmeran was actually dominating this a little bit too much. And it was quite high, to be fair, at 2% in this formula. And I think that's a really big amount for cashmeran. And that pushed it over into the earthy side of things, almost, I think, a little bit too much. So next then, moving on to the trials. And now we're going to go to the second full perfume trial. So with this one, I decided to now pretty much go off before, but start adding some more notes in. So we kept the Vertifix, the Timber Silk, the Oud Samrat, although this time actually lowered the level again. And then we kept the Cashmeran, again, lowering that. And then the, the bit of the Oud Samrat that I lowered, I replaced that again back with the Jivko. And the reason for that was I do think I still prefer the Jivko as a base, and I definitely felt that having both of the Ouds in there would help kind of expand the smell a bit. Then, as well as that, I kept the vanillin lowering it a little bit because I did feel in the dry down that that formula was actually getting a little bit on the sweet side. And then I started adding back in some extra things. Now, the Vertifix actually smelled quite thin. It was probably the weakest smelling or the least prominent thing out of the things in the last formula, even though it was at quite a high level. So I wanted to, um, let's say, augment those woody notes and make those a little bit stronger, a bit more prominent again. So what I decided to do was add a little bit of cedarwood essential oil. That's more of a crisp, kind of fresher, more potent woody note. Then, as well as that, I thought I would start adding in some other notes. So I decided to add back in the Vetiva Absolute, because I thought out of um, all of these notes, this one would work quite well, and this one seemed to, for at least from my smelling it on its own, it seemed to complement the smell of the Oud. And then I decided to add a few more things still. So I decided to add a little bit of ethylene bracelet, a very standard musk, and that's because I thought in the base note with the vanillin and the very end of the dry down, it could use a bit of musk to boost the perfume. And then I thought, 
as well to go with the vanillin. Let's try some kind of ambery thing because we're going for an incense theme and amber's used a lot of incense. But again, I was interested in this idea of the Styrax. So normally you'd make an amber with labdanum and vanillin. I thought, how about we make a kind of fake amber or a kind of unusual or a bit more creative amber. So we essentially keep the vanillin, but we switch out the labdanum for another balsamic note. And that in this case is the Styrax. So I added a little bit of Styrax. And then finally, I was thinking about the top note because at the moment, this perfume is a little thin in the top. It doesn't really have any kind of um, impact, let's say. So I thought we could fix that by adding something again that would fit. So fitting in with the incense theme, I decided to look for some frankincense. So some olibanum frankincense, the, they're different words for the same thing. I got some olibanum oil, which I have, and put a little bit of that in as the top note. So this blend, I thought it was definitely a big step in the right direction. This blend was actually looked more similar to the first formula we did rather than the last one. But the smell is a lot more now where I want it to be and it's a lot, it smells a lot cleaner and it smells like it's doing the right things. So immediately when you smell it, you can smell the olibanum, the frankincense, and that gives you a bit of a kind of peppery, spicy top note and that really helps lead into the rest of the fragrance quite nicely. Then you can also immediately tell that the woody notes, um, specifically the wood from the cedar wood, immediately adds this kind of much fresher, more prominent woody note. And that really kind of boosts that vertifix and helps give this woody vibe that really blends quite nicely with the other notes in the perfume, especially the oud. The oud sits really nicely now with, you can smell like woody amber notes, woody notes, oud, all kind of together. And it makes this almost one kind of wood accord, this own kind of like, let's say an oud wood smell. And then you can smell the vetiver in there and you can smell that it's kind of filling out almost the some of the gaps in the fragrance. It's, let's say, making it feel a little bit more solid. It's adding a bit more depth to the smell, but the level which I chose, it's not too overpowering or anything like that. Now, one thing I did notice about this blend is especially in the mid note region, it's still got this kind of a little bit of a muddy animalic note, which I don't really love. And that was something I wanted to get rid of in the next formula. I also felt that the cashmeran was still quite strong, so I wanted to reduce that a little bit further. And I felt the effect of the musk in the base note wasn't quite enough. So I thought ethylene brassolate, especially it's quite a subtle musk, needed a little bit like the vertifix needing the cedarwood. I felt like the ethylene brassolate wanted something to boost that up a little bit as well. So then for the third formula, what did I actually do? Well, firstly, I wanted to work out what was calling that kind of muddy animalic smell. So I went through all of the raw materials and I find that skin testing is a good way to do this, not putting the pure thing on your skin, but putting a safe dilution on your skin. And, you know, using the scent strips can help a little bit as well. And what I found was it actually seemed to be coming from the Oud Samrat itself. So what I decided to do in this formula was to lower the level of Oud Samrat. I also felt it could have been coming from Cypriol in the original formula, so I decided not to add any Cypriol, even though initially I thought it might have been a good idea. Then I lowered the cashmeran again because I thought that would be a little bit too strong. I also added a little bit of Velvione, and this is a bit more of a stronger musk, I find. It's a bit more potent, so I added a, just a small amount of that to complement the ethylene brassolate. I didn't want this to be a really musky perfume, but I just thought a little bit more musk in there would help kind of pad it out and kind of bring things together. Then, because I'd gone and lowered that Oud Samrat, I still wanted the Oud note to be quite prominent in the perfume, so I decided to add some of a different Oud base, and I decided my next favorite Oud base after the ones I'd used was the Oud Olifac by IFF, so I decided to add a little bit of that there as well. Then, the final two additions I decided to make were to further, hopefully, fill out the perfume, because I thought with these changes, it wasn't already too many changes that I wouldn't be able to see the effect of, say, an additional one or two things. So I decided to add the Dreamwood base, which is a sandalwood base, because I thought, again, sandalwood would complement all of these kind of woody incense notes in the perfume. And finally, I decided to add a little bit of black pepper, because black pepper as a spicy peppery kind of top to mid note, I thought that would really complement that olibanum note, that frankincense that we already had, and just kind of make that um, nice peppery smell a bit stronger in the top to mid, as well as also being kind of quite a woody leaning spicy note. I thought it would still blend quite well with the rest of the perfume. So then looking at this trial, the trial three, 
I was really happy with this, I'm not gonna lie. I felt like pretty much this formula reached the goal initially, which was to create an oud perfume because, okay, it's got some other notes in there as well, but I think, so you've got this nice opening of these kind of slightly peppery, spicy incense notes, but you can, um, you can smell really the more kind of oudy notes still in the background, and then it opens out into some kind of woody notes, some woody ambers, that kind of nice woolen cashmeran, like slight hints of musk, um, all these other things, but really oud sits at the heart of it as a note, and I don't think it's a an oud that feels out of place. I think actually it really sits nicely like a jewel in the middle of all the other notes. So I was quite happy with this. I thought um, if you're looking for just a a plain oud kind of perfume, or oud inspired oud themed perfume, um, you could make this formula, and I think it's pretty decent. I'm not gonna lie. So yeah, this one is a success. Now, if you want to make just an oud perfume, then you could just stop here and make that formula. But what I thought at this stage is now we've got quite a generic perfume which is really based around oud. It's really quite, let's say, it's quite linear and it's quite, um, it's not it's not got a lot of notes composed together, right? It's really just oud and friends, let's say, and that's it. But a lot of people obviously like there to be more complex notes in their perfumes. They like a bit more of... Um, a bit more variety interplay between different things, more kind of interesting themes going on. So I thought, what other note or notes could we add to this oud perfume? Maybe just to make it a bit more complex, um, and that kind of thing. What could we experiment with? So I went online and I looked at a load of oud perfumes to see what other notes people seem to blend with oud. And what I found was, for some reason, rose is a really common thing. I think it must have some kind of good accord with oud because everyone is making a rose and oud perfume. So I made another trial where I decided to add rose as a mid note and bergamot, in fact, as a top note because I was thinking, well, if we're adding a mid note to this perfume, why not add a bit of a top note? That's a bit different as well. And out of all the top notes, bergamot is the one that people just go and use all the time. It's said to work well in everything, so I thought let's just be safe here and try some bergamot. So this scent was a trial four, and what I did was literally add some bergamot essential oil, then I added some real rose oil, and boosted the rose oil with a bit of phenyl ethyl alcohol, as well as a little bit of eugenol, because I thought the eugenolic note in rose would work quite well with this kind of dark, spicy, incense theme of the rest of the perfume. So I thought, why don't we bring that out a little bit more? But that's it, a pretty simple change. Um, because especially if we're testing the addition of an entirely new note into the perfume, we don't want to go and add too many things at once because it will be hard to tell what's causing what. I'm treating the three, the eugenol, phenyl ethyl alcohol and rose almost as one accord that we're building in the perfume. So they're almost one addition though we could have just done it one at a time to have an even better idea of what's going on. And then the bergamot as a separate addition, which is a top note. And the way we'll tell the effect of the bergamot versus the rose is when you smell it initially, you especially smell what the bergamot's doing. And then once the bergamot's gone off, comparing that to the formula before, you're seeing the effect of the rose as well. So when I go to smell this, I didn't really like it so much anymore. I'm not gonna lie. And I felt it's because the kind of woody signature character that it had, this really nice, dark, deep, uh, complex, woody kind of incense theme. Um, you now have this kind of soapy rose-like smell, which just kind of, it kind of made it lo lose its kind of rugged uh, character, let's say. It made it lose its um, kind of quite strong, um, let's say, dark, woody facets. It kind of, it was like a gloss over it. It just kind of made it all go, all go to this kind of soft, um, kind of a little bit soapy, um, you know, a bit like just a very more of a generic perfume kind of rose smell. And the effect of the bergamot, you know, must be part of that because it doesn't really stand out on its own. You don't smell a distinctive bergamot smell. But the interesting thing here was that once it had gone into the mid note, the combination of rose and the rest of the oud perfume in the mid-region was actually really nice. It suddenly developed into much more of a, let's say, let's say kind of a nice, like high-end, like 
incense woody smell. The rose actually, the rose with the incense and woods in the mid, the mid region, and really added to it, and it brought out a, a nice kind of. All I would say is kind of like a really, a kind of luxury, kind of um, edge to it. It actually really complemented it quite well. So what this made me think was, bergamot is probably not the top note to go with this perfume, because the top note area was smelling bad, and that's the only time that the bergamot was present. So we definitely don't want to be using bergamot in this formula. And then I thought, it's possible that the top note part of Rose doesn't work so well, but the mid note part of Rose does. And that made me think, we could probably keep the Rose in the perfume, but I would say that we want to use something else as a top note to at least mask it if it is indeed the Rose. We could just go and do another test, firstly, with Rose on its own, see what that's like to see if it was just the bergamot and then secondly after that then we can experiment with other top notes if i was doing a proper perfume for my brand and doing um doing things in a more you know a proper way that's how i would go and do it like just test one variable out at a time but because we're doing this for the video um i like to do things a bit quicker and do more changes and maybe not understand them quite as well as i should so that's what i went and did for the last formula which was the fifth version of the Oud perfume. So in this one I got rid of the bergamot, I kept the rose, and this time I decided to look for a new top note. So I was going through my raw materials, going through the top notes, so I was smelling them, I took a scent strip with the top note and then one with the perfume and smelled them together to kind of decide if I thought it might be a good combination. And what I came up with in the end was a combination between mandarin and pink pepper. And I just found that these notes worked quite well, so I thought let's try a version with both of those. And I think it was because um, maybe Mandarin usually seems to, at least in my opinion, work well with Rose, and it's a bit more, let's say, it's a bit more of, I don't know if exotic's the right word, but it's a bit more of a kind of uh, rich, um, intense, interesting version of citrus and the usual sweet orange or something like that. Even though I think sweet orange could have worked quite well, um, especially because I think it goes nicely with cedarwood, which you do have in the perfume. But I think, again, sweet orange, mandarin, they're quite similar anyway, so they're, they're quite close. And then with the pink pepper, I thought it's probably because we've already got that frankincense and black pepper that they probably um, would combine well anyway with pink pepper, which is not too far off of them. It's a bit brighter, it's a bit fresher. Um, so I went and added those, and that was the fifth perfume. And smelling this, I think it was pretty successful. It pretty much got rid of that soapy uh, rose note, so quite possibly it wasn't the rose, it was actually the bergamot interacting with the rose in the context of the perfume. But instead, you already notice this prominent pink pepper, which has got its own um, quite intense, interesting top note. It does dominate a little bit just for the first few minutes, so it may or may not be for you, you could turn it down. But I do think it adds something interesting, it adds another kind of bit of personality to the perfume beyond oud. When you open it, it doesn't really smell like oud now, it smells like the kind of pink pepper, maybe slight hints of mandarin, but then it leads nicely into that much more kind of, let's say, that rose kind of luxurious style of the incense, and then ultimately dries down into that same oud um, kind of musky, uh, woody, slightly vanilla sweet, you know, base note as before. So this perfume is pretty cool too. Now, which one is better, the Pure Oud perfume, so trial number three, or this one, trial number five? That, I think, really comes down to personal preference. In the first one, we just had a Pure Oud perfume, so if you wanted to smell like Oud and you just love Oud so much, um, then maybe actually trial three would be a good one for you because it's got a very different character. It's just raw, kind of woody, kind of incense, a little bit sweet. This one is actually taking it and creating something a bit different out of it. Now the rose and the pink pepper are really quite prominent notes, just as prominent maybe as the oud itself. So this is no longer a purely oud perfume, but you could say this perfume is like pink pepper, rose and oud as a combination. So you may find this more interesting than a pure oud perfume. You may go and prefer this. What I will do is I will leave you with these formulas that I've been putting on the screen in this video. And if you like the sound of any of these, then feel free to go and make them yourself. And you can also go and keep modifying these formulas, do more trials of your own, 
and maybe even make a nicer perfume than one of the ones I came up with because at the end of the day I only did six trials and I'm sure using these formulas as a base you could have limitless combinations and make something your own and make something pretty cool and if not maybe you could just use these formulas to study for yourself and um, get an idea for the kinds of things you can do. So that's it then. That is an oud perfume and an oud rose and pink pepper perfume made in about six trials over the course of a couple of weeks with a sprinkling of experience because I think when I was um, beginning or a few years ago I wouldn't have necessarily been able to come up with the same result in so few trials or in as short of a time. Anyway, I hope this video provides you some value and I hope you can take away something from it for your own perfumery. If you like the video, do remember to give it a like and subscribe to the channel, that way you'll get more videos just like this when I release them straight into your subscription feed on YouTube. Apart from that, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time with another video all about perfumery.